I asked everybody to mute. All right, Miranda, you may have to unmute. I muted everyone else, and you'll have to unmute. So. Unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we've got you now. <laughs> okay, well, like Jason said, my, my name is Miranda Varner. I am a senior crop insurance advisor for my team, Cattle and Crop. Um, our agency is located in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and we cover uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. Um, one of the things that we offer several uh, crop insurance products like traditional crop insurance of corn, wheat, beans, uh, tobacco, cotton. Uh, we also offer the livestock policies. Uh, but one of the policies that we do offer is pasture, rangeland, and forage insurance. And uh, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today. So uh, what is pasture, rangeland, and forage insurance? Um, this product is often referred to as PRF, uh, drought insurance, or pasture and hay insurance. Uh, no matter what you call it, simply put, PRF is a risk mitigation tool that is designed to protect producers' forage across our acres of, for a lack of a participation precipitation in uh, two month periods. It's an insurance coverage that is available in the 48 contiguous states and has existed for the past several years. Uh, Tennessee producers became eligible for this product in the fall of 2016. And we all know that rain makes grass, grass feeds our cattle and our cattle feed our back pockets. Um, so if we don't get it rain, grass doesn't grow, our calves don't match the scales the way we want them to, and therefore our back pockets aren't as full as we would hope. So this policy was created as a safeguard for those livestock and forage producers to protect against those economic downfalls for forage production losses due to dry weather conditions. So in order to make educated decisions about purchasing pasture and hay insurance coverage, you need to know the basics of how this policy works. First of all, PRF utilizes a rainfall index to determine the amount of precipitation that is received in a given area. That rainfall index is based off of the data that is reported to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Climate Prediction Centers or otherwise known as the NOAA I weather. Do that, that says mute. There are several of these weather know. stations scattered throughout the United States. These stations collect weather data that is used not only for PRF policies, but all the other crop insurance policies as well. Crop insurance policies as a whole are guaranteed off of something. Uh, traditional row crop policies are based off of that producer's past yield history, Livestock risk protection and dairy revenue policies are based off of the futures market and how they fluctuate. The PRF policies are guaranteed and determined off of those 70 plus years of data that's been collected by those NOAA weather stations. PRF policies, like I said, are classified as rainfall index policies. Um, because USDA likes to use all the acronyms or acronyms rainfall index is often referred to on the paperwork as just simply RI. The rainfall index is determined by calculating the average rainfall received in a given area. And remember, that is an average for the area, not your specific and individual farm locations. So a lot of people, the, one of the main questions that I get a lot of the times is where are these NOAA weather stations? Um, these are the locations of those stations that are in Middle Tennessee. So you can see that they're scattered everywhere. Some counties have more than one. Some counties don't have one at all. But here are the list of all those rainfall stations or those weather stations that are in Middle Tennessee. PRF is an area-based plan of insurance. This means that the policy is not based on the rainfall amounts that are accumulated on individual farms. It is based on the rainfall amounts that accumulate in a general area. 
that's where the NOAA weather station data comes into play. That data that's being collected is not only being used for to determine that average rainfall total, but it's also being used. You're over here pushing to participants. I don't think that the actual amount that the rainfall for that area. The area-based plans of insurance do not take in consideration the individual farm or farmer's production records, but it takes in consideration the region as a whole. Of course, for PRF, those records that we're talking about refer to the amount of average rainfall in the past years, as well as the amount that's being received during the insurance period. The different areas that I'm referring to here are differentiated for PRF on a grid layout, which is measured as a quarter degree latitude and a quarter by a quarter degree longitude, which in the end ends up being a, approximately 17 miles by 17 miles. Okay, so I tried to pull up a, a map of the entire Upper Cumberland area and it just wouldn't work for me. Uh, the more I zoomed out, the less I could see. So here's just a snapshot of a uh, part of the grid for Middle Tennessee. Uh, you can see the counties obviously are in blue and that red checkered is the uh, the grid lines. And it's kind of hard to see, but the dark, uh, the black numbers that are in the middle of those grids are the grid numbers. Most counties are all going to be, all counties are going to be divided in those grids. Some counties are divided into four quarters and other counties are divided more often. Like, for instance, Warren County has got four grids, uh, 19077, 19078, 1877, and 1878. Van Buren is the same way. It's four quarters. But then you have other counties like DeKalb County that actually lay in six different uh, grids. Even though you can't hardly see it that far western corner, far west southwest corner, it is technically in a different grid with White County, that far eastern side is technically in that other grid, that 1908-80. So even though the PRF policies are not based on the rainfall for your individual farm, we still need to know, to know where your farms are located in order to know which grid they're going to be um, on the policy. There is no premium advantage or disadvantage to having land that lays in more than one grid, but there are some advantages uh, to them laying in different grids, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. PRF is a forage production product, which allows the producer to protect his or her grass acres according to the land's actual use or the land's potential use. And here's what I mean by that. Um, acres insured under a PRF policy must be categorized as either haying acres or grazing acres. This can be done a couple of different ways. A person can insure their acres in their actual use, meaning the hay acres would be insured as hay acres and the grazing acres would be insured as grazing acres. Um, that's one option. Another option would be that a person could insure their acres for their potential use meaning you could be insuring as hay, your hay or grazing acres as either or, or how you want to hope to use them. Uh, determining which category that you want to classify your acres would be totally dependent on the appetite, your appetite of risk. I have some clients that put all of their grassland acres on their policies as hay acres, and even though they graze part of it. On the flip side, I have some customers that put that do just the opposite and put all their grassland acres as grazing, even though they cut hay off a part of it. There is no rule stating that you must list your acres under certain categories because of their actual use or how you actually use them. One rule of thumb that I do use when helping someone decide which category to flag their acres in is this. If you can drive a tractor and mower across it, then you can call it hay ground. If you can't do that, you have to consider it grazing ground. Um, I, because these are federally subsidized policies, there is a chance that um, your policy may get pulled for a random audit. We are required to do audits ever so often. If they do come out and look and say, you know, look to see at the maps that a piece of ground we have flagged as hay ground really can't be considered hay ground because of the trees or 
or um or something of that nature we will have to declassify it but you have the opportunity to call any of your ground hay ground even if you don't cut it for actual hay um, the Risk Management Agency, or RMA, is the governing body that makes up all the rules and regulations for crop insurance and farm programs that the FSA and NRCS do. They predetermine a monetary value for the hay gra acres and grazing acres for each county and each grid. Because hay gra acres have the potential to produce more money per acre, the, the county value for hay acres is greater than the county value for grazing acres. With a greater value comes greater premiums, but there's also the greater potential for a higher valued claim. In the same token, the, the grazing acres do cost you less, but the potential for a claim there or the payout for that claim is not near as great. The policy coverage uh, is active over the indicated amount of time. The time increments are broken down into two month intervals. There is one rule that goes with this policy is that a producer is required to select no less than two two month intervals. So basically you have to insure four months out of the year in order for this policy to go into effect. The only stipulation is that those two intervals cannot overlap. PRF, the PRF crop year, <clears throat> excuse me, coincides with the calendar year. So the first available interval for this policy is January, February, and so on. So this chart here shows you all 11 intervals that is available for PRF. The ones on the, on the left, we always refer to them as the odd intervals. The ones on the right are always referred to as the even intervals. So for example, uh, if you choose, if you want to choose your two month intervals, you can choose January, February, and March, April or January, February, and April, May, because those months do not overlap. You cannot choose January, February, and February, March, because February overlaps. They won't allow us to do that. They can be consecutive, but they don't have to be. Just you cannot overlap. That's, that's the one and only rule that you cannot do. Um, let's see. My team... Uh, Insurance suggests looking at the historical data for the past 20 years in order to determine which intervals you want to select or, or avoid. We also encourage our clients to select intervals to cover the entire year or at least the vast majority of it. Think of it like this. Um, do you know when you're going to have a car wreck? Do you know when you're going to get sick? Or do you know uh, when a tornado is going to come through and cause damage to your your property. We don't know that. So how do we know which months to actually put our insurance on? Same goes with this, this policy. We don't know when we're going to have our dry months. So we don't know when exactly to put our policy on. So it's better to go ahead and, and insure the entire year or at least the vast majority of it so that we make sure that we have our, our, A's, our, our uh, <clears throat> T's crossed and our I's dotted. It is, like I said, a requirement that you have at least two of those intervals, but you can go up to six. Um, it has a lot of times when you start talking about these policies, a lot of people would like to just ensure the, the, the times that um, they think they're using the, those acres the most. However, it's been in my experience that the intervals that fall between May and September typically have a lower average rainfall already. So in order to initiate and collect indemnities on those months, we would have to have extremely dry conditions. And in a few minutes, I'll show you a quote of that historical data so we can make all of that part of it make sense. Interval selection needs to be completed for both hay and grazing acres for each grid. 
This is where the advantage to having land laying in multiple grids comes into play. Uh, for this example, we have 50 acres of hay ground that's located in grid 19677. We have uh, 25 acres of grazing ground that's located in that same grid. And then we have 50 acres that's located in a neighboring grid of 19678. You can, because we have um, so-called different crops, we have hay and grazing in the same grid. Even though they're in the same grid, you can select uh, different intervals for each of them because they are different forage types. Same goes with the two uh, hay lines. They are in separate grids, even though they are the same hay type or forage type because they are in separate grids, we can do different intervals on them. This is where your advantage comes. If we can have, for example, that first 50 acres, put them all in the odd intervals. We can have that second 50 acres all in the even intervals. In a sense, you have all of your intervals covered. Um, that Picking those intervals in a situation like this comes back to uh, looking at that historical data or having an agent sit down with you and help make those decisions. Okay, so now we get to the interesting part. Here's where we make all the decisions on building your actual policy. A producer must select the coverage level that he or she would like to be locked in at. That coverage level is telling us how much of the average rainfall that you would like to guarantee. Those coverage levels vary from 70 to 90 percent. So do you want to ensure your or guarantee yourself 70 percent of average rainfall or would you rather guarantee yourself 90 percent of average rainfall? 90 percent coverage is the most common coverage. Coverage levels do change or move in 5% increments. Um, there is a catastrophic policy available for most every insurance policy, but it is not available for PRF. The next decision that you'd have to make is that protection factor. Some companies, depending on which uh, insurance company you use, call it either a protection factor or a production factor. Basically, all that does is allows us to increase or decrease that predetermined county value that we talked about earlier. This factor can bring that value of the hay or grazing ground either down 60% or it will go up 150% of that predetermined value. That percentage will actually move in increments of 1%. The most common production factor or protection factor is 150%. Unlike most crop insurance policies, PRF does not require a producer to insure all of their acres on the policy. This policy allows you to dip your toe in the water and try it out for a year if you wanted to. It is not all or nothing. You can do, say, for example, you have a five, you have 500 acres that you hay and pasture. If you wanted to try this policy out, you could do a few acres in hay, a few acres in pasture, and that's okay. You do not have to have all or nothing. The interval index percentages, will, I'll show you those um, when we look at this quote. Once you select which intervals you want to be in, we have to put um, decide how much weight you want to put on each interval. But we'll look at that in just a second. Okay, so now we're going to look at a quote. This is for Smith County hay ground. It is a little convoluted, but I'm going to dissect this down a little bit. Okay, so this quote is actually for Smith County. It's for grid, obviously, 19,677. It is hay ground, non-insure or non-irrigated ground, and it's 100 acres. And you'll notice that that county value is $261. That is that predetermined value that RMA has decided that that ground in Smith County is worth for hay ground. This particular person that we're quoting here is, and this is 2024 uh, insurance premiums 
as of right now, they have not turned out the 2025 um, rates yet. So we are using la this this past year's insurance qu quoting on this policy. So this may change for this next year, but it shouldn't change a whole lot. The coverage level that we've selected here is 90%, which is the maximum percentage that we can do. That protection factor, that productivity factor is at 150. Again, that's the maximum. And here we here it shows exactly what it's doing. This protection amount is that $352.35. That is 150% of that 261. That's what we're protecting against. So if we got zero water, zero rain, zero snow, zero anything, zero precipitation for those that two month interval, we would be getting a check for $352 per acre on that interval. I hope that makes sense. In order for that to, uh, for this protection, it's going to cost us $21.34. Now, keep in mind that these policies are federally subsidized. So your total premium technically is $43.53. Now, this total premium is 400 acres. Um, the government does subsidize that policy at 51%. That is part of the farm bill. So that's where we get our acre premium at $21.34. So here we go looking at the bottom here. Um, here is the intervals that we talked about. And for me to get this quote to spit out, I put, I selected all the odd intervals, which is every other one. That interval percentage that I was talking about is this 16, 16, 17, 17, 17 percent. That's going to add up to 100 percent of our acres. We want to make sure that we have weighted these however we want to. These percentages do not have to be equal. They can be whatever we want them to be as long as they add up to 100%. That, those percentages tells us how much weight we want to put on each interval. And this is where that historical data comes into play. So this top part here or the bottom part, I'm sorry, tells us a lot of information about this grid. For example, it tells you how many years in the past 20 years this policy has paid out for each interval. So, for example, January, February has paid out 10 out of the last 20 years, and it's paid at 131% of the premium. So, if we had selected February, March, it has paid 11 out of the 20 years at 193% of the premium and so on and so forth. So you, this tells us a lot of information here. It also tells us what the average rainfall is for that time period. So it's for January, February, on average, that interval, that grid receives nine point, almost 9.3 inches on average in that interval. So if we get 90% or less of this amount, then we start triggering claims. Miranda, hope... there was a question in chat. Uh-huh. The, the question was, was the cost that you were talking about, is that per month? No, that is the annual cost. Okay. That this, for this particular example, this premium for 100 acres would be a total annual cost of $2,100.34. I'm sorry, $2,134. I hope that answers the question. Um, okay, so if we go, here is the hysterical, historical data that I was talking about. Um, so for each interval here, we have the 20-year data. This number that we're looking at is a percentage. This is telling us how much percent of that nine acre of the average uh, rainfall, which in this case was 9.3. And basically it's nine inches across the board until you get into the, these uh, summer yeah. months. So in 2024, for this year, the January-February interval, we received 1 point, or 112% of 
of our average rainfall. So obviously that's more than 90%. So we, there was no indemnity paid. Same for February, March, we got 91.8%. So we didn't get a claim. Now in March, April, that interval in that grid only received 82%, almost 83% of that interval or of that average rainfall. So they did get a small indemnity. And you notice, I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but it's slightly purple. And the darker the interval is, the more that they got paid. So you can see how many, how often the, that policy would have paid if those intervals were selected. This bottom part down here where the yellow is, any month or any year that is shaded yellow, there was an indemnity paid and 100% of your premium, the producer premium was paid in full and you received a check. So like in 2023, this particular policy or this particular grid, the premium would have been 2134, just like it is this year. His indemnity, he got paid in for Mar February, March. He could have been paid in March, April if he had have had that. Um, there was a check done in April, May, another one May, June, uh, August, September. September, October got a good check because we were way below 90% and same for October and November. That The potential for that policy to have paid out was 361% of that premium. So his total indemnity was $7,702, which ends up being 55, almost $56 per acre paid out for a net total of in his pocket money of $5,568. The only years in the last 20 years, now to keep in mind, this policy was not available back in 2003, um, but if it had have been, out of those 20 years, there was only one, two, three, four, five years, six, seven, seven years out of the last 20 years that he would have had to pay all of his premium or a portion of his premium. The other 13 years, he would have not paid his premium and would have gotten a check in his pocket. He would have cleared money. He would not have had to actually physically write a check for premium. It would have been paid out of his indemnity. Now that was for hay ground. Um, same goes for grazing ground. I, I really wanted to show you all the uh, county value, the difference on that county value. For grazing ground, this is the same grid, same pro guarantees or i'm sorry same coverage level same production factor all of that is the same the only difference is that county value it went from 261 dollars for hay ground to 56 dollars and 30 cents for grazing ground and so at that 150 protection factor you're looking at 76 dollars and a penny for coverage if we had zero rainfall for that month um because it is the same grid and we're looking at the same um, time fly, timelines, your years paid and all of that is still the same. The, all of that is going to be the same. The average rainfall is all going to be the same. The only thing that's going to be different here is that county value and how much that premium is going to pay. Um, on that other value, <coughs> excuse me, on that other quote, we were looking at a premium of still of total claims of 361%. Instead of it being $5,500, you're looking at $1,200 for the, the, graze, the grazing ground for the same 100 acres. Um, these numbers will change slightly for different areas of the state or different areas of the country. Um, there are some areas that pay out better. Um, there are some areas that don't pay out near as well. Um, and I'll be glad to quote anybody that they want to see what their area looks like. But one thing I did mention earlier that I wanted to show you all is if you notice, like a lot of people want to insure their summer months because that's when we're cutting hay. That's when we want to sit, to protect as much as we can. And if you notice, especially July, August, we have 
only five of the last 20 years has paid out a claim. And even if we paid out a claim, it wasn't enough to even break even. It's a net indemnity of $3. Even July, August, or June, July, it pays out only 8% or eight times out of the last 20 years, but we still have a net return. Same with April, May. We have a net return here. So what, what I typically look at, not only do I look at what years, that it, how many years it's paid, I also look at these loss ratios. Anything over 100% means pay, premium has been paid. Um, and we're, we're getting into cash money. Um, we want to look at um, the best interest and in, for you. So if this was my Paul or if this was a customer of mine and I was trying to tell him what intervals to pick, we would definitely be looking at the September October because of that 200% loss ratio. We'd also be looking at November December. I would most likely skip over these two months because it is net return and low loss ratios and instead go uh maybe skip June, July, and July, August, do January, February, March, April, May, June, skip these months, and go September, October, November, December. Um, we can do that. We do not have to be consecutive. We can skip around a lot, um, and we can reweight these um, to where it's not an even split. Um, that's where you can get into the whole... Um, the, the Burger King method of make it your way or have it your way, we can do it as however you want to. In the end, your premium is all going to still be close to the same. Um, it may fluctuate just a little bit, but it's not going to change a lot. Um, and the biggest thing about this policy is if you are very, if you're interested in doing this, the sign up deadline is December 1st for the calendar year of 2025. Um, please don't wait till December 1st. If you are interested in talking to somebody about this policy, um, get with us before then. We should be able to start quoting 2025 uh, data and information and uh, rates, hopefully very soon. They normally roll all of that over uh, the first part of September. So we should be seeing those coming out here pretty quick. So if you are interested in talking to somebody about PRF, um, I know myself and Mike Tanzel would be glad to talk to you. But December 1st is that sign up deadline for next year's uh, policy. And like I said, it is a calendar year, so it would start in January and go through the end of uh, 2025. Uh, Jason, I think that's about all I have, unless there's other questions. All right. Uh, anyone, if you, if you have questions, you can put them